Hello all, how are you? Welcome to my geography learning channel. I know it has been a while, but be patient, videos will be coming up. Uh, I encourage all of you to subscribe, to share the videos. They are going to be very beneficial. I'm sure those of who are subscribing, you see that videos are very beneficial to you guys. Right, today I'm going to focus on grade 11 geography on drought intensification. This has been a video that people have been waiting for. And be patient, more videos will be coming up soon. Drought and desertification was one of the last topics that you guys looked at last term. It was one of the last topics, but I'll just look at you so that you can have more time to revise them. Now, whenever we look at drought, we are looking at we, we, we are look, we are looking at a place that is experiencing lack of rainfall or a place that is experiencing less rainfall annually and as a result of less rainwater. Now desertification. Desertification is a process whereby fertile areas are becoming drier and drier. So we usually simplify this term saying that desertification is basically the spread of desert from desert areas to non-desert areas. Now when we look at drought, we always look at the types of drought and I've highlighted for you the notes here on the board. We have what is called hydrological drought. Hydrological drought is, a, is, is when we experience less rainfall and less rainfall to the extent that it also depletes the groundwater systems. Agricultural drought. Agricultural drought is when we experience low rainfall and this low rainfall results in us having less agricultural crops. Ecological drought is where natural vegetation suffers from little rainfall natural vegetation starts to dry up because we're experiencing lack of rain in our forest there. meteorological drought is when we are basically experiencing less rainfall in our atmosphere and what could be the cause what causes all these types of drought the main cause of all these types of drought is as a result of low unreliable rainfall low unreliable rainfall which is as a result of us experiencing global warming. Remember in grade 10 you were told global warming is the increase of surface temperatures as a result of gases like carbon dioxide that trap heat into the atmosphere. So this increase in temperatures can act, the ex we can, it can actually disrupt weather patterns. We can experience more drier conditions which can result to drought or even more wetter conditions which can actually result into us having wetter um, environments like having more floods. El Nino effects, you know with the El Nino effects, you did El Nino, El Nino effects can also bring drier spells into Africa and these drier spells can result in us experiencing less rainfall. When we look at desertification, what causes the spread of desert areas to non-desert areas? Overgrazing, overcultivation, monoculture, deforestation. When we look at overgrazing, we are basically looking at our livestock. Our livestock consuming all the grass cover on the surfaces. When they consume all the grass cover on the surfaces, they actually expose um, the land to soil erosion because we no longer have grass cover that that binds up the soil together and this leads to soil fertility when we look at monoculture monoculture is the growing of one crop year after year and the growing of one crop year after year means that that same crop is using the same um, minerals within the soil and this leads to soil infertility we also look at deforestation. Deforestation is when we cut down trees. And when we are cutting down trees, we are exposing the surfaces to soil erosion. And the more soil erosion that takes place, then it means lack of soil fertility. And it is actually promoting lack of, is the spread of the desert from one point to another. The topic of desertification and drought when we have looked at the causes there, we also look at the negative effects. What about?
when when we have less water what do you think are the negative effects of drought when we have less water it means we are going to have shortage of food production because remember for us to have food we need water that makes the plants grow so if there is lack of water then it means lack of food production it also means our farmers will experience great loss when they have lack of food production it also means that they cannot have crops to sell and it also affects their profits that's what you're talking about here the issue of the profits that they get it is also going to be minimized our livestock will die why will our livestock die because we no longer have water to take care of our grass cover so when we don't have much grass cover then it means it can also affect our livestock it what will it also mean it will also mean our industries will be affected if they are going how are they going to be affected there will be lack of raw materials lack of raw materials because most of our raw materials come from our agricultural production so if we don't have much food production then we are going to lack raw materials for our industries it will also mean our ecosystems will perish when we say they perish we are basically saying that they are going to become more drier and more drier it also means that soil will be exposed so when you say soil will be exposed you are saying this will also promote soil erosion and it will also lead to soil infertility now what solutions can we implement solutions to implement to prevent drought what solutions can we implement to provide to pro to to prevent drought guys what do you think what we should we do we need to implement sustainable water measures we need to conserve water so it's water conservation water conservation can be promoted through education we need to educate people on not wasting water isn't it that's why we are looking at this topic so that we don't waste water we can also recycle and reuse recycle and reuse water like for example if you wash the dishes in a dish that gray water you can use it to water the garden also isn't it we are recycling water or the water that you used for the dishes you can also wash it maybe the cars or the pavements outside we are also reusing water so we need to also make sure that we save water we can also harvest water when we talk about harvesting water when we experience heavy rainfall we should always make sure that we have water storages in place and this also includes at our own households let's have tanks of water that's why you find that people are having those Jojo tanks let's make sure that we do harvest water when we have um, heavy rainfall and let's make sure that we also store water and the government has also made measures to store water by actually making sure that we have enough dams we also have reservoirs so that we can store water when we are in need of water right then what else can we do as i said the dam construction there we need to dam construction because we know that when we do dam construction we are to we store water for future purposes also fixing water leakages fixing leaking pipes so that we don't 
wastewater and also popular water transfer schemes. Water transfer schemes also have been implemented so that we make sure that we have water available. Now, what about prevention of desertification? What measures should we implement when we want to prevent desertification? Remember, desertification is mainly as a result of us human beings. We can do crop rotation. Remember, I talked about monoculture, crop rotation. A piece of land can be divided into four. We can have peas on one side. We can have tomatoes. We can have maize. And then lastly, we can have maybe cabbages. So when you divide your ground into four, you make sure that when you harvest and when you harvest, you rotate that same piece of land growing different types of crops. Because when you maintain crop rotation, you are actually maintaining soil fertility. So it's not like with monoculture where one crop uses the same um uh, mineral year after year. We can also practice contour plowing. You know when we are planting on our slopes, when we plant on our slopes it promotes erosion. But then on our slope, if we do a step up on our slopes like this, this is what we call contour plowing and we grow our crops here, it actually reduces um, soil erosion so let's implement contour plowing instead of plowing down the slope which promotes soil erosion and then in terms of deforestation we also can plant trees isn't it let's plant more trees and also let's make use of organic fertilizers also in our crop production so that we maintain our soil fertility on drought here also, we can also grow drought resistant crop. Drought resistant crops, which don't require a lot of water. It's always good to plant drought resistant crops, especially if you don't want your agricultural sector to suffer. Thank you so much. I hope you found this beneficial. This is topic is very, very well, is well asked, especially when it comes to your paragraphing questions. And when you are writing and expressing yourself, you need to make sure that you really explain most of the concepts that I've highlighted here. Thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe and share. See you in my next video. Bye.